The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Good evening and welcome to Illuminating the Paranormal, opening your mind to the possibility. Good evening, everyone. Hope you're all doing really well here. And here in the Midwest, it is cold. I don't currently have any snow, which is good, <laughs> but there is some more coming. Oh, what a night. So, cold weather coming, more snow coming, and other than that, doing okay, getting some hats sold, so that's always a good thing, that's always a plus. Well, I have with me tonight some friends who have been with me, uh, I guess I've known them now for about four years. I have with me this evening Greg and Kathy Fedick. Greg and Kathy, how are you tonight? We're doing great. How are you? Yes, we're doing awesome. Good. Doing all right, guys. Doing very well. Of course, you know, with the snow coming, I'm sure we'll get it first, then you guys will get it. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Not. <laughs> <laughs> well. Thank you for on your show. Well, I wanted to have you guys on our show. I mean, I know you guys are investigators like me, and, you know, you're somebody that I think would uh, be someone I would want on my show. You guys probably, well, let me ask you, how long have you been doing investigating? Uh, well, myself, I've been investigating since 1991. Okay. And All right. Been, and I've been investigating for roughly about 18 years. Okay. So you guys got a few more years ahead, uh, just ahead of me. I'm going to hit 17 in April. Well, guys, let me fully oh. introduce my guests here. Uh, Greg and Kathy are the founders and lead investigators for the Tri-C Paranormal Team. It's Tri-C because it actually encompasses three different cities in Ohio. You've got Cleveland, Columbus, and Cincinnati. Uh, they are currently the resident paranormal team and Greg is the lead paranormal investigator for the Ohio State Reformatory, or OSR. Uh, some of you may know this facility as Mansfield Reformatory. Uh, this is the prison that was used on the movie The Shawshank Redemption with Morgan Freeman and Tim Robbins. So, 18 years, and you've been doing it a whole lot longer than, than either one of us, Greg. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, what's one of the, what's one of the cases that you've had, either Greg or Kathy or both of you, that has really stuck with you and why? I would have to say one of them that sticks with me is uh, the Rhodes Hotel. Uh, that was probably the most memorable because it, it really scared the bejeebers out of me. Um it was a, a, it's a really interesting place. Uh, if you haven't been there, I, I strongly recommend that you do go there. Uh, Greg and I uh, actually went there, and it's a, it's a very haunted location. And what we had a lot of activity, but I'll just stick with one of the things that happened um, that pretty much scared me. Uh, we were up in the attic, and, of course, as you know, when you're an investigator, you you investigate in the complete dark. And there were four of us up there. 
and we have the, the back part of the attic open to us, and, and, there, and um, actually there were five investigators. The one was standing by the stairway, and we were standing in the center part of the attic. And as we were standing there, we could actually hear somebody walking around behind us. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we, we could hear that, but then I, I felt I could hear something, someone walk behind me, and I, then I felt him breathing on my arm, and I immediately asked Greg, are you breathing on me? And he said, no, I'm sitting, you know, over here, which was a little distance from me, and I'm like, okay, well, somebody's breathing on me. And um, <laughs> then we all felt... I started to call up because I felt as if I, was, I, I had a pressure on my chest. So I called that out, and as I called that out, two other investigators was, were calling it out at the same time. And yeah. all of us were feeling that, feeling the pressure in our chest. So after yeah. we felt the pressure in our chest and everything, all of a sudden this hand came down full force, onto my right shoulder and squeezed very aggressively. And, of course, I let out a scream, a blood-curdling scream, and scared everybody else. But I also scared whatever grabbed me, and it ran through the investigator that was standing by the steps. And I immediately blamed Greg and said, why did you grab me like that? And he said, "I, I didn't do it. And I said, why did you grab me? He's like, I didn't do it. And finally, he turned on the flashlight where he was, and he wasn't anywhere near me. So yeah. that was uh, that was definitely a memorable experience. Son. <laughs> it was kind of funny, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got to tell you, I have been there probably about seven times, and it's never disappointed. Oh, you got that. I love that. Oh, to Rhodes? Yes, to Rhodes Hotel in Atlanta, Indiana. Oh, my gosh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, a lot of activity. Very much so. Uh, I've actually spent the night there twice now. And uh, first time got not a wink of sleep. Second time, I think it was like 3 a.m. and I had to be up at 7. So, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Nothing like those two, three hours of sleep and then having to drive home. But it's actually about only two and a half hours from me, so it's not too bad. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's not too bad. Yeah. No. A little bit further. Yeah, well, yeah, you guys are a little bit further away. <laughs> yeah, but it's still a cool place. Mm-hmm. Well, we, we spent, uh, well, we spent uh, two different weekends there. We spent uh, Friday and Saturday nights there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, it, 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 crazy place. <laughs> the stuff that goes on there is just unreal. Oh, yeah. Very much so. Uh, have you guys ever had any interaction with, I call account, I've always called him the bouncer. Uh, for me, he looks like uh, a very tall, broad gentleman um he has on overalls he of course there's only one of them snap the other one's kind of broken and hanging uh sometimes he likes to wear the preacher's hat sometimes not i think he does that as a joke and he's usually on the third step down from the second floor it's kind of like he's kind of stands watch it's like you almost have to go through him to get upstairs he's almost always right there at the top of the steps or the third step down have you guys ever Ever had any interaction with him? Uh, I haven't had any. Well, I may have had an interaction with him. I don't know. I had an interaction with somebody in the uh, the room at the front of the hotel on the left. I think that it was called the Madame's room. Yeah. I had issues in there uh, two times. Uh, the first time, uh, Kathy and I were investigating up on the second floor. Uh, we heard a noise coming from down at the end of the hallway, and I went down to check it out. I went into that bedroom, stood there for a little while. It was quiet, peaceful. There was nothing. I turned around, came out, and went through the threshold, and it felt like something uh, uh, stabbed me in the neck or slashed my mm. neck. Yeah, I got some tense 
burning sensation on my throat. Uh, mm. I screamed out, and uh, but I couldn't say anything else. I, uh, I was yeah. gasping for air. It's like I had a hard time breathing, and just can't explain it. Yeah. And then what I, the second time. <laughs> go ahead. So you go Share. <laughs> uh, well, that was the first time that we were there. And then uh, when we went back to, for the second weekend, uh, you know, we spent the night, and Kathy decided that she wanted to sleep in the madame's room. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> you, know, you know, I'm going to sleep in this room where this woman, whoever doesn't like me. And she did it again. Uh, that wow. first night we were sleeping there, I woke up with this intense burning sensation in my side. It felt like mm. something stabbed me. Uh, the, the the second night, I begged for her not to hurt me anymore, and the second night was fine. <laughs> good, good. Twice. Yeah. I, I cannot say that I have ever been hurt or harmed in any way, but my very first time there, um, I, I was there with Kathy, uh, Kathy uh, with uh, Jackie and Tina, the original pair of sisters. Uh, I'm trying to think who else was there. Uh, Dave Sphinx and David Weatherly. You know, there was like a nice group of people there. And the very first time I went to go upstairs, that's when I saw the bouncer guy. And I just stood there with my mouth kind of open. And another gentleman from another group, I think it was five, six, seven. Anyway, he came around the corner and he stops dead. And he goes, do you see? I said, the guy? He goes, yeah, the one with the overalls. I'm going, uh-huh. He goes, he's tall. I'm going, yep. So I knew I wasn't the only one who saw him. So I go up the steps and everybody's doing their investigation. They're running around and they've got all this equipment. Well, I just kind of kind of sit back and lean up against the wall and just watch everybody because it was a lot of newer people into, into the paranormal. And I'm watching and I'm just leaning against against the wall and he literally comes off the step and comes over and leans right against the wall right next to me and he goes it's a lot of running around and a lot of colorful lights i'm going yeah it is isn't it and we literally had a conversation wow. <laughs> it was so so ever since then i have never felt afraid or felt that i needed to worry and i've never been harmed i don't know whether it's because i had a you know a relationship with this guy, you know, as, as a friend, but who knows? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, funny. I apologize. Yeah. I just, so what is another, have you, Greg, do you have a different one besides roads that you've been to or an investigation that's really, really stuck with you? Uh, yeah. Uh, there was a private home we did in a suburb of uh, Cleveland area. Okay. Um, it was, uh, and we did this home. This was probably about eight years ago. Mm -hmm. Was it eight years? Two thousand. Yeah, 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 it was eight about years eight years ago. And I did not like this home from the get-go. Uh, okay. As soon as you step inside this home, uh, I just wanted to turn around and just run out of the house screaming. Uh, I, did, oh. I did not like it. Uh, these this family had a lot of stuff going on, you know, footsteps, voices, uh, doors opening and closing, shadows, um, just a wide variety of stuff. And mm -hmm. uh, we had a lot of activity that night and personal experiences. Uh, as an example, uh, we were down in, Kathy and I were down in the basement uh, with uh, the, the homeowner, and Kathy uh, says, uh, there's anybody down here can you knock something over immediately something fell over in the back of the basement wow but but the most intriguing piece of evidence we captured was an evp now this evp wasn't your typical evp that a lot of people capture you know you just hear a whisper and sometimes you can't even make out what, what's being said right uh this one was a loud clear voice. Uh, we had two investigators up in the little girl's room. We had a video camera going, they had an audio recorder going, and at the time, one of the investigators gets poked from behind after they heard something fall in the corner of the room. And they get up to find out, try to figure out what fell, and 
reviewing the video, you hear this old man just say, how's it going? I mean, wow. loud and clear. Loud and clear. Yeah, I mean, it was amazing. When I first heard it, I'm like, nah, it's got to be one of you guys, or there's got to be a logical explanation. Uh, but we couldn't find a logical explanation. And when we did the reveal with the homeowner, we let her hear that. Mm -hmm. She says, my grandfather, who is deceased now, used to always say, how's it going? So we brought that audio to her mother and her uncle. And this voice was identifiable. It was not a whisper. They identified the voice as their deceased father. Wow. That's that's really, that's awesome. (laughs) Yeah. How do you explain that? Exactly. Exactly. Yep. I like that. I had one similar, but it was a picture, and I was able to show it to uh, the business owner, and she broke into tears, and she said, that's my mother. But the mother was presenting as about a 14-year-old girl, and she ran and got pictures, and she literally had a picture of her mother in the same dress that I got a picture of her in. So, oh, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Well, Kathy and Greg, I do have a question from our chat room from Tabby, and she wants to know, do you guys have any rituals or prayers that you do before an investigation in order to help protect yourselves? Well, I always say prayers. Um, I, I believe in God, and I believe in Jesus Christ. So I always say a prayer before going in. And I always say a prayer leaving. And I also have anointing oil that I will use um, and bless myself before going into locations. Very and nice. I just have Kathy say a prayer for me. There you go. Okay. So just nothing specific, but just kind of generic prayers for protection and white light. Is that what we're is that what you're saying? I, I, I don't. I don't even specifically ask for white light or anything like okay. that. Okay. I just I just speak to I just say prayers to to God and ask Him to protect me from you know anything that may be mm-hmm. harmful. Um, okay. But also one of the things I do when I leave is I I do say anyone that may be here needs to stay here. You're not welcome to come home with me. Yeah. Smart move. I do very good. Well. Oh, yeah. Uh, So besides the anointing oil, is there anything else that you might use? Any blessed tools or salt, holy water, anything of the above? I don't know. But, you know, there's people on our team. Everybody has their own little ritual, different ritual, because we have a wide variety of different beliefs on our team. Mm-hmm. Um, we're very open on our team to different beliefs. Everybody does something different. And and we, we have 40 members on our team. That's so, a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. And, and, and you know what? We, we need this many because we are so we are so busy. Well, we're, we, we are, like we said, you said earlier, we're in Cleveland, Columbus, and Cincinnati, so we pretty much cover the state of Ohio. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That is great. That's, but then I love the fact that you guys all accept one another, no matter what they follow, what they do. You guys are still a team. Well, well, and that's important because the people that we actually work with, and let me step back and rephrase that, the people that contact us that want us to come into their home may have certain beliefs that are different than mine. So they're not they're not going to feel comfortable with me. They may feel mm-hmm. comfortable with somebody else. And vice versa. Right. They may not feel more they may not feel comfortable with Greg. They may feel more comfortable with me. That never happens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean there's times that Greg has turned over when he's talking to people, he'll say that's more a specialty that my wife you know, works on. Mm-hmm. Let me call her and have her come in and talk to you. And right. so that's why we accept everybody for whatever that your beliefs are, because we have to work with a wide variety of people out there that need help. And that's what we do. That's what our t- team is based on. We want to make people feel comfortable in their homes, and we want to make people feel comfortable in their businesses. And in order to do that, we have to be open-minded. 
I very much agree. Uh, and that's one of the things I have always said. Uh, I'm no longer with the team, but I kind of help out other teams. And that's one of the things that I've always kind of pushed for is said that, you know, you need to be open to everything and you need to learn if you are christian great learn to know some of the other religions one so you can recognize it if the how effective is a christian prayer going to be for a jewish ghost you know you have to you have to have right. you have to have right. your toolbox full so mm -hmm. yeah. yeah you've got to have a lot of different um a lot of different people that come in and work with you, and you have to have a, 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 a toolbox full of anything and everything because you don't know what or whom you're going to come up against. So, or who you're going to try and help. Right. So, good, good. I'm glad you guys are very open minded like that. So, um, I know that, Kathy, that you are, you're a full Reiki master, correct? That is right. Yes, I am. And, I believe your master is one of the Mountain Gypsies, would be Cat Young. That is correct. Cat and yes. I have been uh, friends for a very long time. Yes, I, I yeah. have known Cat and Tess probably about as long as you guys have. And mm -hmm. I, I was so happy to hear that you were working with her and studying with her. That is fantastic in fact i'll have cat and tess the mountain gypsies they'll be on my show on april 14th so if you guys get a chance oh, tune in and you'll get to hear them so oh, that's good. great so besides doing investigating here you're you're also a reiki master do you see clients as well i do i do um i but i do more in shows um i like to go to shows and uh you know do my Reiki there, but on occasion I see people in my home, and I do distance healing as well. Good. And uh, when we do get clients, um, there's times that when we do pre-investigations, uh, I can usually pick up that they need a little bit of a session, and I'll work with them then. Very nice. So. I like that. So besides doing Reiki on people, what else have you done with yourself being a master? Well, you know, yeah, Reiki, Reiki is a very interesting thing because it's what it, you know, and we know, but some other people may know it, not know that it's it's an energy healing. It's, it's energy that uh, you produce through your body, through your hands, to the person or objects. It can be plants. It could be anything in order to help, uh, you know, some type of healing or comfort or um, just, you know, stress relief, whatever the case may be. And mm -hmm. um, through my training with the Mountain Gypsies, I've also learned all about herbs and things like that. Well, with all of the training that I've had, I decided to expand it into homemade natural soaps. Oh, and nice. That kind of stemmed, yeah, that kind of stemmed off the herbs just a little bit. And yeah. I started making homemade natural soaps because you, you have the, uh, I use the essential oils in that as well so that everything is completely natural. And I do nice. some of the fragrance oils too just for fun. Yeah, yeah. But every batch, I do every batch um, in small batches. And every batch I infuse with my Reiki energy. Um, I like to infuse it with a good, positive, loving energy. That, so not only that's are you fantastic. Homemade natural soaps, you're also getting uh, Reiki infused soap as well. Very nice. Oh, and I, now I should say, I should say my my Reiki business name is the Northern Gypsy, and my uh, homemade soap name is uh, Kathy's Bath Craze, Craze being with a K. And Greg's actually got involved in my um, uh, my business as well, and he makes aromatherapy shower melts. And after he makes those, I also do Reiki over those to make sure that they're infused as well. Very nice. See, you're, you're like me. I started my business and ended up getting my husband, you know, pulled into it too. So he's the one that makes all the canes with the crystals on top or the walking sticks. Oh, yeah. That's his job. So. <laughs> 
we we just kind of we just kind of pull people in, you know. <laughs> just, just include them. Like yeah, that's right. Like each other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. And we don't oh yeah. Too much for that. No, <laughs> no, we get along really well. We like a lot of the same things. We're very fortunate. Yeah, and I think uh, part of being able to get along with a lot of different people, not just our spouses, I think that also comes with. Uh, being a master, I think you just, you, you learn to become the person that is, is best for that position. You, you're more open to people. You're more accepting. You seem to love them no matter who or what they are or what they've done. And you work with them and it just, I can't describe it unless you've become a master people. And then once you become a master, you will completely understand what I'm trying to say here. It just, it just, you just, it just changes a whole lot for you. I agree. Yep. I agree. Yes. Yes. Oh, very much. I like it. So you've got the, you've got the soaps, you've got the bath bombs and I'm sorry, what did you say the name of your business was for that? Kathy's bath craze. Kathy's with a K and craze is with a K. And is that on Facebook? It's on Facebook, but I also have the website. The website is Kathy's bath com. Okay, thank you very much. Hopefully somebody will pick up and come over and see some of your great stuff. Uh, I know that uh, I know you have worked with the Mountain Gypsies, and I have too at some of the different cons where uh, people have come in asking for uh, healing and some of the things we've come up against that we've pulled mm-hmm. out of people. Whoa. Right. Just, whew. Yeah. I, I think it was the second year that I was at, uh, at the St. Joseph one when you guys were still associated with the old St. Joseph Hospital in Lorain, Ohio, and you guys had mm-hmm. your Paracon there. Uh, Kat and Tess, the Mountain Gypsies, they were like right in, in the, the front there when you walked, walked in the door, and I was behind them. I was talking to somebody, and I handed the product to my husband and said, I got to go. He goes, what? I said, I have to go. I, I just felt like Tess and Kat kind of like that. mentally going, help, need help. <laughs> I went running over to, oh, the things, I, that was something that I had never seen before. Uh, it was just kind of spidery like that looked like we were pulling out of this person and I just remember because it was the first time something had actually it was almost even though it had legs like a spider it was almost tentacle like and it wrapped around my thumb and my thumb lost all sensation and turned pure white (laughs) and then uh, I think it was at the end that uh, Tess came over and helped me then and we got it we we got the blood flowing again so that is weird to be in front of somebody doing Reiki and people are going, what, what are our hands doing in the air? They have no idea what we're seeing and experiencing a- until it's right. over and done with. And you're like, they, they just kind of stand back like, is this a show? You know, is there going to be sparklers? <laughs> they have no idea. But yeah, sometimes in Reiki, you get called to help somebody with an attachment and uh, yeah. something that is for a master and you just you got to be careful you got to know what you're doing out there so but yeah, sorry I, I i digress sorry i just uh, <laughs> the head always no, kind of stuck no. with me i so. remember that i remember that um uh, when that happened because okay you were like, i i think you were standing up to the side and you were just like inching 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 and going over and over and over you were just like Almost pulled there, and you were helping. Next thing I knew, you were helping. Yeah, I remember that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Oh, yeah. yeah. You were right where you were supposed to be. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I heard the call. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing how we can feel that. Yes. Again, part of being a Reiki master, you 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 know you you pick up on the spiritual cues. So, oh yeah. Yeah. At that time, at that time, I was only a Reiki two. Yeah. That's correct. That, yes. That was my turning. That was actually my turning point for me. 
female okay. event was what yeah. was what actually made me decide to move on to be a Reiki master. Nice. I don't know if you knew that or not, but that was. No, I I didn't. I knew you were too, but I I didn't know what had prompted you. That's mm-hmm. that's kind of cool. Yes. Yep, all of that had prompted that. <laughs> See, everything cool. happens for a reason, people. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Greg and Kathy, I am going to take us out here for a quick break, guys. Uh, let me see here. We need to. Uh, oh, uh, let me see. I need to move some things around here. Apologize. Uh, when we come back, guys, we're going to talk a little bit more to uh, Greg and to Kathy. We're going to talk to them about uh, some of the different things that they are doing right now and see what else they got to tell us. So you are listening to Illuminating the Paranormal on Para-X with our guests, Greg and Kathy Fedick. Your source for everything paranormal. Hey, this is Lee. And this is Michelle. And this is Dustin from the Dead Zone. Your source for everything paranormal, para I found it at last! Marla's Sacred Cauldron. This is the legendary artifact that has been whispered about in hushed tones for hundreds of years, and now it's mine! All mine! (laughs) (laughs) Who dares defile the sanctity of my castle walls? Step away from the cauldron, you impertinent, muddy metal malt worm. Never! I've spent half my lifetime trying to discover your age-old secret of stirring the cauldron. Oh, for Merlin's sake, that's no deep, dark secret. Just tune into the Para-X Radio Network Thursday nights at 9 o'clock Eastern for more cauldron stirring than you can shake a wand at. Oh, well, uh, in that case, I, I guess I don't need to take up any more of your time, so I, I guess I'll be going. Not just yet. We've got a little unfinished business to take care of. That's this. Uh, <clears throat> that's stirring the cauldron with Marla Brooks every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern on the Para X Radio Network. And welcome back, everyone, to Illuminating the Paranormal. My name is Tina Marie, and our guest tonight is Greg and Kathy Fettig. Guys, welcome back. Thank you so much. And. Greg, I know that you also has had Reiki before, actually before Kathy even decided to make the decision to uh, become a Reiki master. Um, I heard it was kind of big. Do you want to uh, tell us about that time? Yeah. Um, You know, I, you know, I, I knew about Reiki, but I wasn't sure how it worked. Um, but uh, there was one time where um, Kathy had to take me to the hospital. Um, I got, okay. Um, I mean, she, she even came home from work. I got this intense pain in uh, my left side. Uh, I, I was having a hard time breathing. I was in a lot of pain. Oh. Um, so she took, she took me to the emergency room, and... Uh, the doctors were doing some tests on me. I, I forgot what they thought. I think, I think they may have thought I, I had a blood clot somewhere. Oh. Um, but uh, they didn't know what was. Well, they, they didn't know what was going on, and the doctor said, your blood work's coming back kind of funny. Um, mm. So they transferred me to the hospital. In the meantime, Kathy contacted one of our friends and said, can you get a hold of the Mountain Gypsies? Tell them Greg's in the hospital. And they don't know what's wrong with them, and he needs help. They knew nothing about what was going on. Um, 
So, uh, and this was talking with them later that I guess uh, Tess uh, woke up that morning and she had a, a, an intense pain in her left side. And oh. she said that she knew somebody needed help somewhere, but she didn't know who. So our friends contacted them and they told him that he, he's got like a blood clot uh, the doctors need to work fast, uh, you know, because he's, he's really sick. Uh, and they mm. worked on me from their home. And now I'm up here in the Cleveland area. I mean, I was in so much pain. They were giving me uh, pain medication, and it wasn't doing anything for the pain. I even told my wife, I told her I didn't think I was going to make it. Well, wow. they transferred him from one hospital to the other. Uh, because yeah. the doctors at this time had no clue what was going on. They were running tests. They could not figure it out. So they were they had to send him to a different hospital where they could do more intense testing to try and figure things out. Mm-hmm. So w- while they were transferring him via ambulance, a- ambulance, I I drove out there, and when I got to the, his room, he was lying flat, and he was labored breathing and he was gray Ugh. and he was cold to touch. Now Ugh. I've been around a lot of dead bodies because I used to be a, a nurse of aid and I mm-hmm. dealt with a lot of dead people and, and, and people dying. When yeah. I saw him, he was on his deathbed. There's no Ugh. doubt in my, in my mind. And when I saw him, I touched him and he just turned and he hardly could even speak he said I'm dying <clears throat> and I said you're not dying you'll be fine and I walked out of the room and I called my friend and I said you have to call Cat and Tess and tell him I think he's dying and that's when he told me he said they, they, they said that he has a blood clot and the doctors have to start working quickly on him and uh, the doctors, I guess, were looking for a blood clot. Uh, they were again giving me heparin injections, and uh, you know, cat and test were you know praying and, and working on me. And what was it? Maybe an hour, 20, 20, 20, twenty minutes later, I'm like, "Why am I here in the hospital? Let's go." He sat straight up. I felt a hundred percent better. No pain, wow! Nothing. And I'm, I'm like, okay, let's go. Uh, they worked on me, and. Uh, well, the doctors came in, and the doctor said, we don't know what was wrong, but we think you should stay in the hospital because we want to still do more tests because because uh, we want to try and figure out what was going on. Well, Greg and I knew what was going on because Captain Tess told us. So mm-hmm. Greg said, no, we don't need to know. We're, we're done. We're going home. And we left. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, and uh, I could be the, the cat and test, you know, you know, healing me through Reiki. Yeah. So it was amazing. Wow, that's, what a testimony. That's just, <laughs> woo. So I guess, was that, the, was that the point in time, Kathy, you said, I need to be a part of this? I, I would imagine so. I, I think I wanted to be part of it before that, though. Okay. Because I really had a very strong belief in it. Greg was mm-hmm. a little bit more stubborn in, in the belief with it. I think that was a turning point for him. Mm-hmm. Oh, that works. Okay. Good. It does work. Yes. I, I, it most definitely does. I, I mean, I've done it not only on people. I've done it on plants. I've done it on food. I, I did it on my car one time when it wouldn't run, and it worked. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wow. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, oh, things happen with Reiki. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yes, very much so. And and I think you definitely have to have a, a firm belief in where you feel that healing is coming to. That helps tremendously. So, well, I did want to ask you guys I, now. A, I, like, I like what you said. I like what you just said. Okay, well, but good. That's, I mean, that's how I feel. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with you on that. Yeah, <laughs> it's it, it, you got to kind of you, you got to follow the healing people. You got to know where it's come from. <laughs> oh right. man, 
Well, I did want to ask you guys, you know, originally you guys were hosting investigations at the old at the old St. Joseph Hospital in Lorain, Ohio. And then that ended and then you guys, how did you get when and how did the move happen to Ohio State Reformatory? Well, we, Kathy and I, have been volunteering there since 2013. Uh, okay. And, um, and then, you know, when we uh, were doing, uh, I think we started doing St. Joseph in about 2015, 2016. Uh, we, were, we were doing events and private hunts out of there. And OSR was actually knew about what we were doing up there and all the good that we were doing. Uh, and then uh, when the ghost hunt manager left Ohio State Reformatory, they asked me to be the lead paranormal investigator at the reformatory, which nice. I gladly accepted. Yeah. Uh, you know, they knew about tri Ghost Hunters, uh, and they knew about, you know, how long I've been investigating. And I just bided my time there. I do what I'm supposed to do, volunteering, putting my hours in. Mm-hmm. And as soon as we announced that we were closing St. Joseph Hospital, a uh, house state reformatory jumped on it and came to me and said, hey, we would like your team to be the resident paranormal team here at the reformatory. So yes. right now we have, out of our 40 members, we have about 20, between 20 and 25 that actually volunteer there, too, with the public hunts. And I run all the private uh, ghost hunts there. Um, okay. And, uh, you know, get some of my uh, team members there. Kathy is a tour guide for the ghost walks, which are ghost tours at, at night with the lights up inside the prison. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it was a great opportunity for us. I mean, you know, they get extra help uh, for all their events. So it, it's, uh, it works great both ways. Nice. So besides you guys doing that and, and volunteering your time and working there at uh, OSR, um, what what's the best part? I mean, is it the people coming in or the experiences there? Well, we always have experiences there. Uh, mm-hmm. So, I mean, it gets to the point where, uh, you know, when I'm running a, a private hunt, you know, sometimes uh, the teams that come in and they say, you know, come and investigate with us. And I'm like, nah, you know, I investigate there all the time. Uh, and, uh, but, but for me, I mean, I love the experiences and just opening and closing up before and after an investigation. You know, I, I have experiences. Uh, but I love meeting everybody. I love meeting everybody, networking with everybody. I mean, for me, that's the best thing. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so anything that has just been unbelievable that has happened to you since you've started, uh, but not just volunteering, but since you and your team have been a part of OSR, is there anything in particular that you that brings to mind that you want to share with us? Maybe something that's happened or something that someone experienced there? Well, as far as paranormal experiences, there um, I would say the shooting star, lightning bolt, for me. Oh, t- tell um, me about that. We were. Uh, I'm I'm gonna make a long story kind of brief. Uh, the, we were there were about nine of us up in the west attic. Everybody sees lights up there, uh, and it's pitch it's pitch black. There's no windows. Uh, it's hard to see your you can't even see your hand in front of your face, and everybody sees these balls of light. Um, okay. One time uh, we were up there, everybody seeing these balls of light. I couldn't see them. I'm like, I don't see them. You guys are crazy. There's no balls of light. So I like moved closer to where they were seeing them. And I'm like, okay, when you guys see the balls of light, tell me. They're like, here comes one now. I'm like, I don't see it. <laughs> well, you know, that went on for a little while. And then all of a sudden, this next ball of light, I did see. And we all saw it, and uh, we pretty much all described it like a shooting star or a lightning bolt that comes flying in and hit one of my uh, pieces of paranormal equipment. Oh. Uh, and then it just exploded in this golden flash of light, and then I was immediately overcome within this ice coldness. Uh, craziest thing that's ever happened to me there. Uh, I mean, I had a lot of experiences, but that one stands out. 
and I was there for that. So that was uh, that was an amazing experience. Does everyone feel its spirit? Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah. Okay. All right. Just just from what you guys are experiencing, it, it. I mean, that's the first thing that popped into my mind. It. It's. It's got to be spirit presenting itself however it can present itself but that that's pretty cool i don't think i've ever seen it react or do that that's that's pretty awesome yep mm-hmm. nice uh has there been a, a time that was not so good for you guys that you, when you were there no no, no because I, i'm a retired police officer and uh in my experience you treat, well, when I was working, if I treated criminals, pardoned criminals, if I treated them with respect, they mm-hmm. would treat me with respect. And that's how I was able to diffuse a lot, lot of situations. Uh, same thing here. I, I talk with the, the spirits that goes there. Um, so they know who I am, what I've done, but I treat them with respect. Uh, and in fact, they have actually been very helpful uh, some of the EVPs we get there, they're, they're chiming in and helping us. But on the flip nice. side, if you provoke, you challenge, remember, these are criminals. Yeah. And they can see us, but we can't see them. And there have been people that have been attacked up there only because they've been provoking. But mm. if you treat them with respect, you're fine. You provoke. These are, you know, these are hardened criminals that were there. Yeah, yeah, and you know, yeah. the last thing you want to do, it's like, it's like if somebody came into your house and they started calling you all kinds of names and they started threatening you, you would react, and that's basically what what happens there. You know, people go in there if they're they're cussing at them and if they're threatening them, they're reacting, and like Greg said, they're criminals. They react a lot stronger than you or I would. Exactly. And uh, we've seen some physical damage, you know, Mm -hmm. because of provoking. And Mm -hmm. we have pictures and we show people, this is what happens if you do that. Don't do it. Yeah. Right. Right. Be smart about it, people. I I will have to tell you guys that last year, when you had the first Paris Icon there, uh, was my very first time there at Mansfield. And uh, you know, I you know, being a vendor, I really didn't get a lot of time to get to get out and go walk around. But every once in a while, when things slowed down, my husband was walking around, and my husband always says, you know, he's at, he's as gifted as a box of rocks. I don't agree with him, but you know, he so he says he never feels any. Thing. For the first time ever, he came back after touring uh, Solitary. He came back and he was pale. And I'm like, are you okay? He goes, you need to go to Solitary. I'm like, why? He goes, for the first time, he goes, I think I understand what you, what you go through. He goes, that, oh, wow. that just shook me to the core. He goes, it's almost cool. as if I could hear them screaming. I'm like, no. He goes, yeah. I was like, oh, I got to wow. go check this out. So I went, you know, and I and I walked, I did a little bit of a walkthrough. And then on my way back, I hit solitary before coming back up to the vendor area. And, oh, yeah, if you have gift in any way, yes, you you will feel their 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 sadness, their pain, their just overwhelming this is this is the end for me. It was just it it tore your heart out to walk through there, mm-hmm. and yeah, I did hear a few screams in my head, but you know, and I'm sure it's just echoes of the past. But man, oh oh, it it does. It just it just right to your core. So yes, yeah, oh, yeah. so yeah, it affected him. So when I told him I was signed up again this year to, to go to the Paris Icon, he goes, "Cool, cool, good. That's the one I want to go to." I'm like, "Okay, all right." right. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, yes, let's talk about that. You guys have a fantastic Paracon that's coming May 2nd and 3rd, correct? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it is called the Paracycon, guys. It is going to be at the Ohio State Reformatory, or Mansfield for some of you. And this is one you do not want to miss. It's awesome. You get to uh, 
walk around and see the prison, the one that was in the movie. And you, you guys are also going to have some great guests. Who do you guys have lined up? Have you made any announcements of who's coming yet? Oh, yes, we made announcements. Uh, we have uh, Chip Coffee. Uh, we have Steve Gonzalez. Um, we have Amy Bruni. Adam Berry. Uh, Dalen, Juwan, and Marcus, the Ghost Brothers. Brothers, yeah. And, and then we have uh, Chris and Mike from the Tennessee Wraith Chasers. <laughs> All good people. I have met all of them, friends with some of them, and, oh, fantastic lineup, guys. Very nice. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Now, do people have to pay extra to come and, and listen or to see the guests? Well, what people have to do, they have to pay their admission into the okay. Ohio State Reformatory which is $15, but they do have discounts for, like, you know, um, elderly and military and students. So they do have discounts. I think they even have Groupon. Um, nice. So you pay your $15. You take your tour, tour through the, the prison and the museums. They've got uh, uh, the Ohio Penal Museum there. They've got the Shawshank Museum, uh, uh, which is about, about the movie there. Uh, mm -hmm. And then you come to our events. Uh, we're going to have upwards of 80 vendor tables there. Uh, oh. We have speakers. We have the celebrities. Uh, we are also going to have raffles. There's four raffles that we're doing. Right now we're doing one where people can win. Uh, you have a chance to win two sets of two tickets to the Celebrity Ghost Hunt and the celebrity meet and greet that Saturday night. Oh, nice. So, so you have a chance to do that if people want, and I'll give the website uh, if people want some more information on these raffles. Then uh, we are doing two raffles during the event. One is called a scavenger hunt. And oh. uh, basically what you're going to have to do is find like 20 to 25 different items that are going to be scattered throughout the different vendor tables. <laughs> then once they find an item at a vendor table, the, the vendor will sign off on it, and then they bring it back to the tri -C Ghost Hunters table. We'll give them a raffle ticket, and then they'll have a chance to win a couple of uh, uh, tickets to a public ghost hunt at the Ohio State Reformatory uh, plus some spending money in the gift shop. Right. And then we also are having two more raffles. One is um, we call it the vendor sales raffle. Uh, okay. For every ten, every $10 you spend at a vendor's table, you will get one raffle ticket. So you know, if you spend $20, you'll get two raffle tickets. If you spend 50 you get five raffle tickets. And uh, you can win. Uh, we're working on a really nice prize for that. Um, so, you know, what, once we have the prize for that, we will announce that. And uh, we're also working on a Harley Davidson motorcycle raffle. Oh, 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 okay. And, and all of the money, all of the money from all these raffles, um, from from everything that that we bring in, gets donated. Back into the Ohio State Reformatory. Uh, Tri That's Ghost awesome. Hunters who host, who host the event, we do not get anything out of this. Uh, and we're nice. also doing a food, a food drive uh, for the local food bank and a pet supply drive for the local animal shelter and humane society. So it's all about giving. That's what Tri C Ghost Hunters is about, about giving. Nice. That <laughs> sounds only, awesome, guys. The only cost is getting into OSR fifteen dollars. Yeah, you can go see the celebrities. Right. You go see the celebrities. Uh, you know, obviously they're they're gonna charge for autographs and photos and stuff like that. But you still go up and see them. It doesn't cost anything to go t talk with them. Uh, speakers are free. Everything's free. So, if you've never been to the Ohio State Reformatory, go do your t tour. Plus, you get the Paris Icon as an added bonus. That yeah, is the awesome. Ghost yeah, yeah. The only, the only thing that do, does cost is our celebrity ghost hunt and meet and greet, which uh, the the meet and greet is going to be 
it's an hour meet and greet. Uh, they're going to get some souvenirs, and we're going to have some hors d'oeuvres there. And all nine celebrities are going to be part of the meet and greet. Uh, there's limited t- tickets on sale uh, for that, but it, it, you got to buy that in a package with the Celebrity Ghost Hunt. Uh, the Celebrity Ghost Hunt will go until 2.30 a.m. Um, the nice. celebrities are guaranteed to stay to at least midnight. Uh, so, it, it, uh, you know, what we did this event last year, uh, we didn't do the meet and greet, but we did this event last year, and so far about 60% of our ticket sales are returning people who came from last year. And did not your ghost hunt sell out before the before you guys even had the show? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it, it, will, it will sell out prior to the show. Well, Chip oh, I believe it. Gallery. Yeah, we uh, Chip Coffee is also having a gallery gallery reading oh. that Saturday. Tickets for him sold out in less than 24 hours. Yeah, that sounds about normal. <laughs> well, guys, you can go to their website. It's www.tcghoio.org. And if you head over there, you can also click on the link and head in and find some more information about the Paris Icon, which is this May 2nd and 3rd. That it, I mean, guys, you don't want to miss this. It, it's such a little, such a small amount of money for such a huge day for a huge weekend it's just great guys and the vendors are awesome and yes i will be there i will probably be right by my good friends the mountain gypsies because they're good people (laughs) and now is the southern gypsy going to be there too kathy yes the southern gypsies will be there and like mother like daughter will be there as well nice awesome Oh, and the Buckeye Gypsies will be there, too. So, oh, good. And I, I did want to add, too, if you are coming out, you don't even have to worry about lunch because we're going to have food trucks there. So you can oh, good. have lunch at the food trucks. So that make is it good. I like that. No, no worries. Good, good, good. So you guys just think of everything. And I'll tell you guys, if you are a vendor and you're thinking about this event, these people take care of their vendors. I have not I am not going to any other place that when I am a vendor that takes care of you as well as Tri C. They take care of their people. They take care of their vendors. They're good people all the way around so please check Thank into you. this go to their website www.tcghoio.org and then you guys can get some more information on the paris icon if you're looking for information about my show you can find me on facebook.com illuminating the paranormal or any one of my other three sites nature's earth where w-a-r-e heirloom haberdashery and three sisters smudging greg and kathy thank you so much we have about 30 seconds to go so i just want to say thank you guys and will you guys come back again because i have some more questions to ask you. Oh, oh absolutely. Definitely, and thanks for having us yeah, on. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. Anytime, guys, please check this out again www.tcghoio.org. Go check it out. Check out the Paris Icon May 2nd and 3rd, and you will not be disappointed. Yeah, especially if you guys go down to Solitaire, you're going to love it. Very great and a lot of great hosts. So, all right, guys, well, you have a fantastic night, and I will see you guys next week. Good night.